Good morning, guys. Some of you may notice, even though we're back in Tennessee, this is not our usual camping spot. We're actually staying with Marissa's mom at her house to try that out. So Marissa's mom has totally been bribing us. I think she wants us to stay around as much as we can. So usually my morning starts off with this, but instead uh, her mom has made me this. Some sort of apple, is this apple dumpling? Is that what this is? Dumpling, do you say dumpling or dumpling? What's the proper? I bet somebody calls it dumpling. You think, or do you think everybody leaves the G off? It's really good, and uh, we're gonna call it apple dumpling. It's like dessert for breakfast. I want to come in. Um, I don't believe I know who you are. Um, I'm Hensley. Can I come in? Uh, you still don't look familiar. Are you really Hensley? Yeah, I don't know. Are you Hensley? Yeah. All right, come on in. And so we've just parked on this concrete slab here next to the house. And so if you've ever thought about staying with friends or family, or maybe you haven't, there's sort of some pros and cons about doing that with an RV. And so usually we use this grandfathered in unlimited internet Verizon hotspot, uh, which works pretty well, but sometimes we don't get a crazy good signal or we, even though it's unlimited, we still try to watch our data because it's month to month. But the good thing about if you're staying with family or friends is if they already have unlimited internet with a landline, uh, you can use the internet there. One of the best parts of staying with family is getting to spend quality time with them. It's not coming and spending an hour or two and leaving. It's waking up in the morning and coming over and having coffee and having conversation and sharing meals together and just really getting to, to spend that that extra time together and it makes staying with family really awesome. Uh, being close to family is nice too because Hensley gets to spend time with family. And, but we love her to death, but we get a little bit of a break <laughs> because Marissa's mom or Marissa's sister, or one of her brothers, there's frequently people here at this house uh, that want to spend time with Hensley and Hensley gets to spend time with them. And you guys know I love to save money. I think I've actually heard it called mooch docking. <laughs> Not that we're trying to mooch at all. It's just um, one of the perks and it's really cool because we get to share resources and we get to chip in and help my mom and you know help her with things around the house that she's been wanting done so it's been it's been a good exchange another pro to staying in friends and family's house is uh if it rains for a long period of time which it's rained pretty much all day it's been nice to be able to come in the house and have a little room to stretch out Some of the cons that you could encounter staying with friends and family. I think you might have like a space barrier thing. This isn't an issue with her mom and with her family as far as having our space, but I could see where if you're parked right next to someone, it would be difficult for them to know when they should or shouldn't come over, or you should or shouldn't go over there. And then so you got the whole, you know, you're right next to each other kind of thing going on. Space could possibly be an issue if you're going to see somebody who's in a subdivision or in the middle of a city. Even though we didn't have an issue getting in here with our Airstream, I can say if you plan on doing a lot of driveway surfing, uh, the smaller you are, the easier it's going to be. Uh, there's definitely times where we have either thought about going to somebody's driveway or we looked into going to somebody's driveway. We did it very rarely in our class A because <laughs> it was just way harder to get around in it. And a lot of the driveways, uh, we were members of Boondockers Welcome, but like 75% of the ones that we saw that we wanted to use were like, 35 feet or less, 30 feet or less. So when you're shorter, it does make it easier to get into places like this. And then another possible downside is hookups. Uh, you might run into somebody who has full hookups. They've got everything you need, water, sewer, electric, 50 amp. Probably not real common though when it comes to staying in people's driveways. Usually though, you can get water and electric, which for us is a step up above nothing. <laughs> so we're very happy to have that and that's what we have here. In which the whole hookup thing kind of leads into some of the tips for if you're staying in a driveway. Uh, number one is where you're gonna park. Uh, when we were deciding where to park here, the main thing you wanna look at is electric. But what you don't wanna do if you can at all avoid it is to run out of length on your main cable. And so once you get longer than the length of your main cord, or an extension that's this thick as well, and you're using like regular extension cords, uh, you're 
probably not gonna be a good idea to be using things like an air conditioner and a microwave and some of your heavier appliances like that. We parked as close as we could to an outlet so that we could still keep our main cord. And so it leads over here under the garage into an outlet and it's at 20 amp. So we can actually run our AC on this uh, without issues. But the reason we can run our AC, which is kind of tip number two, is because we ran another cord to our refrigerator. Because if you've only got 20 amps and your refrigerator is already gonna be taking some of that power, you're not gonna have enough juice left over to do a whole lot. And if you can't find a separate plug or breaker for your refrigerator, most RV refrigerators have the option for gas or propane, so you can just turn it to propane. And then one thing you definitely wanna do is turn your water heater to propane. So right now ours is on propane, but if you don't swap it to propane, then that's gonna be pulling a lot of electric uh, when the water heater kicks in. Water isn't as big of a deal. If you need to, you can get another hose, you can extend the water. We could reach the water spigot from here. To me, the electric is probably a bigger deal. You really wanna pay attention to where that's at. It's mail time. Is that what daddy does? Just kinda... <laughs> Let's open the it. Suspense is killing you. This one's from the Delaney family. And we're gonna see. Did they color it? <laughs> Somebody got a hold of it and color. Let's see. How do we open this thing, Hensley? Right here. That's definitely one of the perks. Staying with the family is getting mail. <laughs> well, Papa, look at this, yeah, Hensley. So you know what that is? I think I think she might make these. Like when you're traveling, you can use the dry erase side. Or look at Whoa! all that. Oh, Hensley, look at all that. Thank we, you we, so much for the drawing. We saw Hensley playing with magnet, magnets in the van and thought she would love an art box. Craft and Barrel, Facebook.com slash craft dash in dash barrel. That's Triangle. Triangle. Yay! Travel uh, toy. Travel <laughs> I think I got it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Octagon. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, <laughs> So this one's from Robert. Three fourths inch compact tissue that, with the addition of a little water, expands to a nine by nine disposable cloth. Huh. Let's put it in the water. Look at it. It's like. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I'm sure your face is dirty. It's always dirty. It could use a good cleaning. Thank you, Robert. Hensley, <laughs> look. Look what Carol got us. Oh, cool. That's a sticker. You put it on me. Put it on you? <laughs> That's not what it's for. I think it's awesome what you're doing. Also for Hensley, she's getting a real education. So we bought this one, so I know it's inside, but it's RV related, so I want to make sure I show it to you guys. Protein. Can you say protein? Protein. <laughs> this is the stuff I drink in the mornings when I edit. Coffee! Coffee! <laughs> you know what that is, don't you? Coffee? Uh, so one of our viewers, Brian, introduced us to this. Like well, that. he saw our video about the instant coffee, and he's like, I have to share with you guys. He's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> the, the best instant coffee they had found and it's actually not bad and it's a three in one so I don't have to keep, keep like any cream, sugar, nothing. So we just boil water on the stove and throw one of those in. So appreciate his recommendation. It's good, it's good. We bought another bag. So. I know some of y'all are cringing at instant coffee, but <laughs> it's easy. We've come to... It cut out the Keurig, was taking up a lot of space and I mean, I don't know. It, we which had, I know Keurig We had a French great, press, we had... <laughs> we had several things. This is just easier. Yeah. X chocks. We had these on our fifth wheel when we had our fifth wheel. Like it was a lot of sway because it was higher off the ground and the stabilizers weren't that great. And this did help a little bit with that. So you put it between your tires and it chocks the RV and it is also supposed to help with sway just a little bit. Really appreciate you guys who sent us mail. Uh, we want to show us opening those things because it just means a lot to us. We want to tell you thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If you sent something or you watch or you comment, uh, it means a lot to us. But that's our mail. That's some pros and cons. It's her her mom made some chestnut pie, so. Chestnut pie. What's that called? Butternut? Butterscotch? Butter? Buttermilk pie. Buttermilk pie. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> I, just, I think she knows the way to our heart, and she uh, wants us to stay here with. <laughs> you make so, a pie a day. And we're, yeah, we won't leave, I mean, so. <laughs> I, we don't know how long we're going to stay here. It may depend on when she runs out of pie. But um, <laughs> once that runs out, we're going to move on. 
and see where we go next. No, it's been great. <laughs> and my grandma's in town. So I'm getting to, getting to spend time with my mom and my grandma. And then me and Hensley, it's four generations getting to eat pie. It's <laughs> a lot of pie eaters. Well, we are going to call it a day. And we will catch you guys later. <laughs> Did I do that wrong? Should I? <laughs> Just be normal. We're going to call it a day. We'll catch you guys later. No. That wasn't normal? No, that's not how you normally do how it. How do I do it? You don't say we're going to call it a day. We're going to call it a day? We're going to... We're going to call it a day. You're all in my head now. No, just say it like you normally. We're going to call it a day. No. So we're going to call it a day, and we'll catch you guys later. Okay, say it Is again. Is that good? Do it again? Yeah, I was looking off, rolling my eyes, I think. <laughs> so we're going to call it a day, and we'll catch you guys later. Your voice went really high. <laughs> what? So we're going to call it a day, and we'll catch you guys later. Sure.